Okay, quick question. Do you really trust everyone you give your Wi-Fi password to? I mean, are you sure that they don't have any malicious intentions? Because once someone joins your Wi-Fi network, they can do lots of stuff to harm you or to just spy on you. So in this video, I'll show you what can happen if a malicious actor gets into your Wi-Fi, how easy it is for them to actually spy on you or even trick you. Before moving on with the video, a quick word about the sponsors. This video is sponsored by Zigo Cloud. Zigo Cloud enables you to add voice calls, video calls, in-app chat, and even live streaming features to your own application through their SDK. You can integrate all these features in your app by making use of Zigo Cloud SDK and all of it works flawlessly with the least possible latency. In addition to this, Zigo Cloud also offers you real-time AI-powered video effects that your users can use to create memorable experiences while using your app. Other features include cloud recording, which enables you to record voice and video calls and save them on your cloud storage, a whiteboard, which provides an environment for real-time drawing and communication for your users, AI-powered noise suppression that can be used to fine-tune the audio streaming in your app, inbuilt analytics to monitor the quality of communications in your app in real time, and many, many more features. All this is supported with wonderfully written crystal clear documentation and also many demo apps that give you an insight into Zigo Cloud and helps you understand many use cases of different features that it offers. The SDK is available for all the platforms like Android, iOS, web, etc. So you can use all of Zigo Cloud's features in any kind of app, be it Android, iOS, web, whatever it is. But what about the pricing? Well, you actually get 10,000 minutes of Zigo Cloud usage per month for absolutely free of cost. So you can conveniently test the features of Zigo Cloud without having to pay anything. So go ahead, check it out, give it a try. I'm sure you'll like it. The link will be in the description below. So in this video, I'm going to try this on my own home Wi-Fi network. And if you want to do the things that I'm going to do in this video, make sure you do it on your own Wi-Fi and do not, I repeat, do not attempt to do it on others' Wi-Fi without their consent. Remember that at the end of the day, it's your intention that matters. Take this video in the right way, that is as an educational resource and nothing more. So keep this in your mind, will you? Anyway, so I'm going to try to change the DNS settings of my target network, which in this case is my home Wi-Fi network. So if you're thinking to yourself, what the heck is a DNS? Well, let me give you a quick explanation about what DNS is and how it works, because it is really necessary that you understand it before you can continue watching the rest of the video. DNS stands for Domain Name System. Basically, the job of DNS is to resolve a domain name into its corresponding IP address. For example, let's say you're connected to a Wi-Fi network and you are trying to access the internet from it. Whenever you try to access a website from this Wi-Fi network, you're basically sending a request first to the router or the Wi-Fi router of this Wi-Fi network and this router will forward your request to the outside internet. So any request that you're sending through a Wi-Fi network is sent through your Wi-Fi router, which makes it a very, very good target for hackers because if a hacker or a malicious actor manages to control this particular Wi-Fi router, they can basically control what is coming in and what is going out of the network. So in this video, we are going to do exactly that. You can also essentially configure the DNS inside this router so that this DNS settings that you configured here applies to the whole Wi-Fi Wi-Fi network because all the devices in this Wi-Fi network are going to essentially communicate with the router before their request can be forwarded to the internet. For example, let's say you want to access twitter.com. When you type twitter.com in your browser and you hit enter, you're initially sending something known as a DNS query to a DNS server that exists somewhere on the internet. Now, this particular DNS server to where we are sending our DNS query is actually configurable at our Wi-Fi router, as I said. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure the DNS settings at our Wi-Fi router so that we can monitor all the incoming DNS queries. In this way, we'll be able to know what websites are being accessed by all the devices inside this Wi-Fi network. And this can be legal and illegal at the same time. For example, if you own this home network, this Wi-Fi network, then yeah, you can definitely do so. You can monitor your DNS queries to see if there's any malicious activity. But if you're doing it on someone else's network without their consent, then it's definitely illegal. So 
once again, keep that in your mind. So yeah, now that the concept is clear, let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, you can see I am now connected to my target network, which means I now have access to the router, to my Wi-Fi router. I can basically access it. How do you access it? Well, it's really simple. You just have to know the IP address of your router. And in order to know the IP address, you can just open your Windows terminal or your command prompt and type in ipconfig. This command lists out all the different adapters that exist on your computer. So I'm going to search for the Wi-Fi adapter and under here, I'll find something known as a default gateway followed by the IP address. So this is the IP address of my Wi-Fi router. So I'll just copy it, go to this in my browser. And here is the most important part. When you buy your Wi-Fi router and install it in your home network, it's going to come with a default username and password. You have to make sure that you change this default username and password, because if you don't, then anyone can log in into this portal using the default credentials and they can basically configure all the different settings that your Wi-Fi router offers. In this case, I am presented with a login screen right here and Honestly, I do not know the username and password for this portal, but I'm still not out of luck. Over 90% of home Wi-Fi routers still use default credentials because users simply do not understand the necessity to change the passwords of their Wi-Fi router. So in this case, I can just keep trying some default credentials or even better, if I know the exact modal number or the modal name of the Wi-Fi router that I'm using here, I can just do a quick Google search searching for the default credentials of that particular modal number and I will be able to easily find the default username and password. For example, let's say I have a TP-Link uh, router. So if I just go ahead and Google TP-Link router default password immediately you can see on the tp links official website itself it says that the default username and password are both admin in lowercase so you get the point i'm going to go back and i'm going to try the same default credentials admin for the username and admin for the password let's see if that works click on login and would you look at that it actually worked that is my default username and password I have to change it quickly and I'll probably change it as soon as I'm done with the video. So anyway, now that I'm logged in to my Wi-Fi routers admin panel, I can configure different settings. But what we're trying to do right now is to configure the DNS settings. You can see that it gives me an option to change the primary DNS and secondary DNS. So I can basically put in the IP address of my primary and secondary DNS here and I can connect it to my own custom DNS that I have created. But creating your own DNS server is a little bit complicated, I'm not going to lie. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a tool known as OpenDNS from Cloudflare. So in simple words, what OpenDNS does is it provides a DNS service that I can apply to my home network. And then once I do that, I'll be able to see all the DNS queries that originated in my network, which gives me the information about what websites are being visited on my home network from different devices. So let me go ahead and quickly log into my OpenDNS account. There you go, I'm logged in now. I'm gonna go to networks here, click on add a network. And the first thing I have to do is I have to point my network's DNS to these servers that are mentioned here. So I'll copy the first IP address that's mentioned here. I'll go back to my router settings. And in the primary DNS field, I'll paste the first IP address. Similarly, I'll copy the second IP address and paste it in the secondary DNS. And when I click on save, that is going to reboot my Wi-Fi router. And there you go, the primary DNS and the secondary DNS are saved successfully, which is what we want. So I'll go back to my open DNS dashboard now. And here I have to finish setting up my network. I'll name my network as uh, my network, something like that. You also need to enter your IPv4 address. So you can just go to whatismyipaddress.com, copy your IPv4 address, paste it here, click on save and done. So now to make sure if your open DNS is configured correctly or not, you can just go to internetbadguys.com. And if you see a page like this that says the site is blocked due to a phishing threat, it means that your open DNS is successfully configured. So I'll go back, I'll go to reporting now. And if I go to activity search, I'll be able to see all the DNS queries that are requested here. If you see the destination field here, it shows you all the domain names that are requested by the devices in the network. And you can also see the IP address that is resolved from that domain name. So let's actually test to see if this is actually working. So if I go to techraj156.com, uh, which is my website, this domain name should reflect in my open DNS reports, right? So I'll go back and I'll refresh this and let's see if it shows up here. So let me search for all the domains at techraj156.com and let's see if it shows up here. And would you look at that? 
it actually showed up here. TechRush156.com is the website that I visited and it actually showed up in my DNS queries. So whichever website I try to access from this Wi-Fi network will be visible here. And that's scary, isn't it? You just saw how easy it is for someone to do this on your Wi-Fi network. Now there are more things that can be done by configuring your Wi-Fi router's DNS settings. For example, I can configure my DNS settings and point them to my own DNS server. And by doing so, I can also add fake DNS records. So that for example, when the user goes to facebook.com, I can make the user redirect to a fake phishing Facebook page that I created, which is incredible. So obviously, as I said, if you want to stay safe from such things, the first thing you have to do is to change your router's password. So let me change it quickly right here. Original password and then the new password that I want to set. Let me click on save and your password has been saved successfully. Awesome. And another thing that you could do to stay safe from such things, you can choose to use a DNS server of your choice instead of relying upon your router's configured DNS server. And in order to do that, just go to your control panel, click on network and internet, network and sharing center. And over here, you can see your Wi-Fi adapter. Just click on it, click on properties, and then scroll down and double click on internet protocol version four. And instead of saying obtain DNS server address automatically, you can choose use the following DNS server addresses and you can choose a preferred DNS server. For example, I'll be using Google's DNS server. So I'll just type in 8.8.8.8, .8 which is Google's DNS server address. And for the alternate DNS server, I'll be using Cloudflare's DNS server, which is 1.1.1.1. Just make sure you apply these settings and you're done. And now, whenever you're trying to access a website, you know for sure that the DNS queries are being sent to your preferred DNS server. In this case, Google's DNS servers, instead of relying upon the DNS settings of your Wi-Fi router. So yeah, I guess that will be it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also leave a comment in the comment section. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.